everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today I want to continue my discussion about safety because I think for many of you, safety is your number one concern, your number one fear, will I be safe? It's what keeps a lot of us from heading out onto the road is the idea that we will, something really bad is going to happen to us, we won't be safe. And today I want to tell you that you're going to be safer than anyone else in America because if you come out here and you work at it, you can develop your intuition. And there is nothing as important in being safe, or as far as I'm concerned, living a happy, healthy life, as developing your intuition. I'm pretty sure the majority of us do believe in intuition and know it's a, a valid part of our lives, but there are some of you who think it's just hokum and nonsense and, uh, and woo-woo and spooky, and you don't have much belief in, in uh, intuition at all. Well, today I want to present to you the idea that intuition is a completely valid scientific idea. Uh, our brain is our, one of the most advanced, most complicated, fastest comp computational devices ever invented. Uh, if you're an atheist and you just believe in pure physical science, then evolution has created an, a, a, an incredibly impressive machine. There are no computers that it can even begin to match the physical abilities that goes on inside our brain. But like all computational devices, uh, a lot of things have to go on in the background. There can only be so much put up on the screen at a time. And that screen for us is our conscious awareness, our thoughts. So these things come in and I'm aware of them and conscious of them. But at the same time, that's only a tiny percentage of what's actually going on in my brain. And so as uh, neuroscience has improved and our understanding of brains have improved, we've come to realize that that's only a tiny percentage of what's going on and the rest is unconscious, going on below the level of our awareness. Why? Because we can't understand all that. Our conscious awareness can't cope with the incredible amount of information that my brain is processing just standing here. I've got my visual, my, my, my sense of smell, my sense of touch. I've got a wind and a breeze and, and I'm thinking and spray, stray thoughts are going through my brain and I'm, I'm balancing myself. You know, just the act of balancing yourself takes an am amazing amount of computational power. All these things are going on and so a lot is being processed in the background. So science has come to understand that because we can't keep up with all that's coming in, it's going on in the background and your body is somehow trying to make you aware of these things that are going on. And we see those things as intuition. That's how we are, are grasping them because they're not coming directly into our conscious awareness. They're too minor, they're too small. The, the uh, upper part of our brain is not processing it. I'm gonna put up on the screen right now a, a picture of what's called the triune brain. This was a, a theory that was developed in 1969 by a scientist named uh, Paul McLean. He came up with the theory that there is what he called a triune brain. Now that makes it sound like there's three actual brains and of course there's not. Your brain always acts as one unit, but certain areas are, we know they're specialized. You have a visual area, you have a hearing area, you have a motor skills area, but you also have areas that are control emotions and all kinds of things. So he came up, he studied the different segments of the brain. Again, it's all one whole, it never is separated, but it can be seen as each part doing a kind of a separate function. Uh, and so he said that the triune brain was the original brain was the lizard brain. And you can see that it's right at the base of the skull, at the, at the brain stem. And that is fight or flight. That is autopilot. That's the lizard brain, the earliest brain uh, of the very first living creatures. The next part is the mammalian brain. And you can see that it, is, it controls um, uh, feelings and connections and community and a certain degree of thought. So uh, Cody, my dog, has a mammalian brain and he has memory and he has feelings and uh, you know he has things he does automatically, and that is all the mammalian brain. The lizard doesn't do any of those things. Going beyond the mammalian brain, uh, up horses and 
Pigs are very high, highly advanced mammalian brains. Uh, of course, uh, primates are the highest of all uh, the, of the mammalian brains. Again, it's all just a kind of, it's not higher advanced thinking. And then on the very top, outside of our skull, is the cortex, the cerebral cortex. It's uh, front and rear, and it kind of just encompasses the whole thing. Uh, and that is our highest reasoning ability that only humans have. So, for example, I'm standing here, I'm reasoning, I'm thinking, I hope I'm reasoning and thinking, I hope you can see the reasoning and thinking in it, and I'm speaking. So language and higher processing, and it's all in the cerebral cortex that only humans have. So what happens is, it, again, nature doesn't rebuild things. It created all that in the lizard brain. So at the very base of our lizard brain is this thing that does fight or flight. And it's observing all that's coming in because it's all tied together. It's not three brains, it's all tied together. And it sees these things and it puts them together and makes a snap decision, danger. One of the things you have to understand about these three different areas of the brain, let's say, is they operate at extremely different speeds. The lizard brain is lightning fast. If it's a risk, it's gone. If you've ever been walking out in the desert and seen a lizard running, you know exactly that when you walk by a lizard, it's gone. And so that's super, super fast thinking. And then above that is mammalian brain. So like my dog, Cody, he's very fast. Uh, he sees something, he, he instantly tunes in, makes a decision, is gone. But not nearly as fast as the lizard because it's faster, but not as fast. And then finally on top, the upper layer of the mammalian brain, it's slow. I mean, it's out and out slow. Uh, that might take microseconds for information to come in for me to process it, oh, this isn't a risk. Oh, wait, this is a big risk. So while the lizard brain has instantly decided, risk, run, my upper brain is still thinking. And so that difference in speed is where intuition comes from, from a purely physical scientific point of view, neuroscience point of view. Okay, now I'm gonna put up on the screen a, a uh, picture, a screenshot of the vagus nerve. And it starts at the very base of your brain is actually connected to your brain. It's one of the few nerves that's actually connected to your brain. It comes down from the base of your brain connected to your lizard brain. Again, super fast. You need super fast things here. It comes down and touch the, the vagus nerve, connects to the throat, uh, to your heart, your lungs. It goes down and connects to your, your guts, your all, all your liver, all this stuff. Your, uh, Kidneys, all these things are connected. It's connected to them and feels them. So when your lizard brain says, danger, red flash, it sends out a signal and you feel it all over. You feel it all over here. And that is what we think of as intuition. A warning that didn't come from your cerebral cortex. It doesn't know about it yet. These signals have traveled down, come to you, and your, your, and your cerebral cortex, your eyes may never see it. Your processing of the lower parts of the brain has taken it all in, seen much, much more than your, your higher thinking will ever see, and saw danger and is warning you. That's the scientific explanation of, of, uh, of intuition. Perfectly valid, there's almost no question about it. Intuition is real. Uh, it's something you can develop and learn just from a strictly scientific, atheist, physical point of view. Another way we can understand that intuition is very real is that in the language people, different peoples in the world use, the language they use reveals a lot about what they think and how they feel and their reality. And we have a lot of words for intuition. Let me give you some of them. Uh, some of the words that we commonly use, I'm sure you've used these words, you've heard them used. One is premonition. I'm knowing something before it happens. That's an intuition. A vibe. I got a bad vibe. That's another word we use. And we think about that. I've got a bad vibe about this. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to turn around and go back. A hunch. That's another thing. It's not, it's, uh, you know something, but you don't know how you know it. You have a hunch about it. Or this just doesn't feel right. I, I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stop here. I don't think I'm gonna camp here. I don't think I'm gonna hang around with those people. It, they don't feel right. Uh, a sixth sense. You know, we all know the five senses: eyes, ears, nose, all that stuff. But a sixth sense is your intuition, and we use that phrase. There's a movie about it. 
we know all about having a sixth sense of intuition that we want to always try and listen to. I have an inkling. We say that. I say, I have an inkling that this isn't good. I, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to stay here. Or maybe I have an inkling that I can trust this person. I feel good around this person. I think I want to get to know this person better. Uh, another is a funny feeling. That's a, a, a phrase we say all the time. I have a funny feeling about this person. An omen. We get omens. We get the feeling of omens or foreboding about a person. A, a sneaking suspicion, just a nagging, sneaking suspicion about a person, about a situation, about camping here. Um, and the other one is an apprehension. I get a dread, a feeling of dread, just this feeling of, ah, no, 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 no. And then finally, a, a, a scientific term is ESP, extrasensory perception. Now, another way we define, uh, we can learn a lot about intuition is the words we use that apply specifically to what I was talking about, this part of our body. So some examples of that, I've got butterflies in the pit of my stomach. So the idea that, you know, I just, my, my stomach's a little upset because the lizard brain all the way directly connected to your belly, to your gut. Spine tingling, the same thing. That vagus root nerve is going down there. I got a, a spine tingling. My, I got the chills in my spine. We say those things. I got goosebumps. Somehow is it, it, the nerve sends out to our skin and we get little bumps in our skin when something is good or when something is bad. We, it, we just get this feeling that we don't know where it came from or why, but we want to pay attention to it. Uh, or a shiver up my spine. Now, you know, have you ever done that? Something will happen or a thought or a feeling and, and you'll just get a little shiver up your spine. Hairs standing on end. And I've had that. I know I've had that experience. Uh, you get a lump in your throat or you've got a dry throat. Again, that vagus nerve is flowing right through there. And the, the lizard brain sends out a message instantly. Problems here. And, or a feeling in your bones. That's another phrase that we use. And finally, the idea of a tingling in your neck or tingling somewhere on your body. Again, all the vagus nerve, it's all biological, very logical and reasonable. This is intuition. So I think you can see how that biologically, uh, intuition makes perfect sense. Your uh, subconscious is taking in information, putting it all together and sending out warnings super fast. And it's just up to you to recognize them and respond to them. But as I've said, I believe that intuition is a great deal more than just that biology that is, is built into us at birth. I believe there's a, a higher form, a spiritual form, a um, higher self. I don't know. Call it religious, spiritual, not uh, uh, spiritual, but not religious. Call it anything you want. <clears throat> but I think the majority of people believe that as well. One way that would strongly imply that is how important intuition is, is in science, the arts, and business. In each of those things, science, intuition is critically, critically important. <clears throat> I could spend hours and hours and hours going over uh, quotes and, and people, what people have said and written about how important intuition is, is in discovery in science and creativity in art and in business. And that intuition is a vital role to many of the leaders. So oh, uh, just take my word for it, okay? I'm gonna give you four quotes from very, four very famous people talking about how intuition has been uh, just extremely important. So the first one will be Steve Jobs. If you do a, a Google search on Steve Jobs intuition, you'll just find page after page after page. Steve Jobs believed in intuition and built his life and his business on intuition. Here's one quote. The people in the Indian countryside don't use their intellect like we do. They use their intuition instead. And their intuition is far more developed than in the rest of the world. Intuition is a very powerful thing, more powerful than intellect. In my opinion, that's had a big impact on my work. Steve Jobs built Apple, and, uh, and now uh, Tim Cook, I can I have a quote that I'm not going to bother to give you, from Tim, Tim Cook saying very much the same thing, how he relies, even today, 
as the CEO of Apple since Steve passed away, uh, that he depended on intuitions. Number two is Thomas Edison, probably the most famous inventor of, of uh, our, our time, for certain, probably in American history. Uh, he said this. Now, he, this is a quote from a letter he wrote to a friend talking about a battery he invented. It has just been so in all my inventions. The first step is an intuition. That's going to be true of everything we're going to look at. The first step and is, is an intuition and comes with a burst. Then difficulties arise. This thing gives out and then that bugs, such as little faults and difficulties show themselves. And months of anxious watching, study, and labor are requisite required before commercial success or failure is certainly reached. And then he tells the story that after he had this intuition, that they did 10,000 experiments before they got the battery right and it was uh, commercially viable and, and of course a success. 10,000 experiments. Uh, Albert Einstein said this, the intellect has little to do on the road to discovery, uh, of which he made numerous discoveries. There comes a leap in consciousness Call it intuition or what you will, and the solution comes to you, and you don't know why or how. You don't know why or how. You can't prove it intellectually. You can't verify it. Then starts the hard grinding work of proving it or disproving it and verifying it. And finally, one quote from Jonas Salk. He was the uh, medical researcher, medical doctor, who discovered the polio vaccine changed the course of America uh, back in the 40s. He said this. Uh, it is always with excitement that I wake up in the morning wondering what my intuition will toss up to me, like gifts from the sea. I work with it and rely on it. It is my partner, Jonas Salk. All of that to say, that is safety depends a great deal on, um, on your, uh, your intuition. And so it's important you develop it. And next, we'll, in the next video, we'll talk about how you can develop it. Uh, but it's so much more than that. It's how you live your life, how you direct your life, whatever field you're called into. In fact, knowing the field you're called into should be an act of intuition. Uh, it should come with that burst of insight and knowledge. And so I hope for each of you that you will have uh, be motivated to learn about and develop your own intuition, first so that you'll be safe, because that alone, if that's all it ever accomplishes for you, it's well worth doing. But beyond that, everything in your life will be better if you develop your own intuition and find your own path through life. It, when those bursts of inspiration, of imagination, of intuition, where you know, this is the way, I'm going to go that way. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.